well, it's uh, 701 or thereabouts. <clears throat> so the uh, ZBA is meeting is over. And uh, my associate will read. All right, uh, posted in the new report, uh, Daily News on uh, July 26th and August 2nd, 2024. In public notices, West Newbridge Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, public hearing, the West Newbridge Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, August 14th, 2024, at 7 p.m. at the town offices, 381 Main Street, West Newbury, Mass. Under general laws, Chapter 48, as amended for application, number 2024-0, Isley Hill, Isley, sorry, made by uh, Craig Cutner, care of Lisa Mead of Mead, Tellman, and Foster's Pasta, LLC, 30 Main Street, New Report, Mass., 0195 for the premises located at 0 Isley Hill Road, map 70, block 00, block 14G, within the residence A zoning district for a variance in accordance with section 11, the West Newbury zoning bylaw, the by otherwise known as the bylaw, for relief from the minimum length of frontage as defined in the bylaw required by table 5.1 of the bylaw, the application materials are on file in the special services department. The town offices may be viewed during the hours from Monday through Thursday, 8 to 4 p.m. The hearing may be accessed via Zoom and it'll be live and uh, remote access. Right. Um, on the agenda is the uh, review of the minutes. We'll put that to the end. <clears throat> so they take up the uh, Ilsley Hill situation. <clears throat> and we'll have the uh, appellant present his or her case, and then there will be discussion between the board and the appellant. And after that, uh, people in the audience can have a discussion with the board, but not with each other. So we'd like to proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for the record here of the uh, green cards. Thank you. To the main line. Thank you. All right. Well, um, so for the record, as the uh, member said, I am Lisa Mead of Mead Town Park for 33rd Street in the report on behalf of Craig Cutner, who is the applicant on this project. And I don't know, Agnes, if you can get yep. the presentation up. Thank you. Uh, so as the um as the member said, this is uh, an application for zero zero those legal road. Um, my app, my um, client is Craig Cutner, who's the purchaser of this property. Uh, we're here for a variance for frontage as defined under the um, West Newbury bylaw. Excuse me. Um, the property is located in the residence A zoning district. If you can go to the next slide, please. The property is located in the residence A zoning district. It includes 206,910 square feet of lot area or 80,000 square feet are required. It includes 286.92 feet of, um, I'm gonna call it frontage with a small F as opposed to the defined frontage on uh, a public way, Ilsley Hill Road, um, which runs along uh, the front of the property. Um, however, the road constructed under frontage with a capital F includes only 41 feet along that same road. So, um, Mr. Cutler, Cutler is looking for a variance, as I said. So, this is the end of the road looking down um, towards uh, the extension on Bisley Hill. Next slide, please. And um, it, this is the very end of it. And as you can see a little bit in this, it's hard to tell with this photograph, but the road, the area where the road is supposed to be starts to drop off to the end. And I'm gonna show you some uh, topographical maps from the town's my map system in a little bit that shows the contours, but you can kind of get an idea of what the condition is of this part of the road. Next slide, please. Um, again, obviously very um, grown up, uh, a lot of vegetation, trees, uh, and there's some um, challenging topography to say the least. Uh, next slide, please. And again, this is just further down that same uh, way. Next slide. And this is looking back up the other way. So we've, we've hit a lower spot here. Next slide, please. So the um, bylaw requires uh, 200 feet of capital F frontage um, in the RA district, which means that 
the linear, the linear extent of the lot measured along a constructed street right of way. And so here we have Ilsley Hill Road constructed for 41 feet, um, notwithstanding the fact that an additional um, 240 feet ish um, are actually a public way as well. Next slide, please. And as you can see, here's a plan. I meant to uh, mention that Bob Grasso is the engineer on this project. So here's one of Bob's plans. So you can see um, where the proposed um, house would go. Uh, you can also see um, where the road stops. So you can see the 41 feet of where the road stops. And then it continues down um, and not to the end of the lot. And I think that this is important. You see that little, I'm going to call it a key that comes at the end of the lot. So the road does not carry through to the next property, right? It ends right there. That is how it's defined when the um, town meeting in 1984 accepted it. It's described as this. It ends in the lot. So this is not the potential of extending beyond the lot. It ends right there at the end of um, where it's defined the end of it. And I just think that that's important. So. That part of the road is not constructed, um, obviously, given the photos that we've seen. Uh, next slide, please. So here's the full lot. Uh, you can see this is quite a deep lot, um, hence the 206,000 square feet of area. Um, the house obviously would be located towards the front of the lot, and um, the goal would be to build a single family home on the property. Next slide, please. So what do we need to show in order to be granted a variance um, from the board? Uh, we need to show that by reason of hardship related to the shape, topography, or soil condition, uh, not affecting the zoning district generally, um, that there is substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, to the applicant. And then further, step two, so to speak, would be that a desirable relief could be granted without substantial detriment to the public good, or without derogating um, from, substantially derogating from the purpose and intent of the bylaw. Next slide, please. So here, um, there's a to topographical challenge to the road and the frontage itself. Um, we're gonna show you that it doesn't generally affect the RA district where there are roads that are laid out but not constructed and actually even accepted as public ways um, and that that is a substantial hardship. Next slide, please. So here, um, as I indicated to you um, a little bit ago, in the, and you can see it a little bit in the photographs, um, the topography itself is dramatic as it goes down um, where the public way is. Um, the, go, the road goes from about uh, 177 elevation down to 147 and then back up a little bit again to 157 feet elevation. We'll show that on the contours. Um, so it essentially drops at about 40 to 30 feet as it goes beyond down that road where it was, um, where it is actually constructed. Um, so on other unconstructed roads, and there aren't really any um, in the district like this, um, it doesn't have the same topography, certainly. Um, so constructing it would provide a great expense to the property owner. Um, it is it would be for one single family home. There's plenty of access off the 41 feet that exists. Um, and it would it doesn't make sense uh, to construct a road at that distance uh, merely to satisfy, um, in this instance, the required constructed frontage since it is actually a public way. Um, next slide, please. So as I said um, already, the, the road is very steep. Um, it has 15 to 25% slope as it moves along. Um, it's about a 40 to 30 foot drop as it carries down along the front of the, of, the, of the lot. Next slide, please. So here is an aerial view. This is a soils view of the area. Um, it gives us some more information about where it is and how the, the road would have to be constructed. Next slide, please. I'm going to get to the contours. And that just explains the type of soils that are necessary uh, or that actually exist up there. And um, it talks the next slide, please. So here we have the contours. So um, this is from the Merrimack Valley, you know, GIS system of which uh, West Newbury is part. And you can see at the end of the constructed road, it's 177 feet elevation. 
then it goes to 147 then down to 137 uh, at the end of the where the road public way actually ends. So it's a pretty significant drop over that 200 uh, foot extension. Next slide, please. So as for the first prong, we've satisfied the, the hardship related to topography, not consistent with the, the general um, residential agricultural district and its literal enforcement uh, would require substantial hardship financial to the property owner in order to construct it for no actual purpose. Uh, next slide, please. So the next is that um, what our proposal is does not derogate um, substantially from the um, purpose of the bylaw. Here, um, granting a barren allowed for reduced frontage and not be a detriment to the public good or actually to the bylaw. In fact, not constructing it and allowing the house would actually benefit the public good. Requiring construction of the road would actually remove a significant amount of vegetation. Uh, it would um, impact what is a priority habitat area for rare species um, that's indicated on the plan. We'll show you in a minute. Um, the bylaw itself. Um, in the purpose section under section 1.3 of the bylaw, uh, repeats that it's important to preserve the natural unimproved portion um, of the town, uh, preserve its cultural, historical, and agricultural heritage, um, and to not construct the road would preserve the natural and unimproved portion of Hills Legal Road and be therefore consistent with the purpose of the bylaw. Uh, extending the road, as I said, would disturb the area covered by the private habitat for rare species. It would remove vegetation um, and natural pervious surfaces um, from the hill. Additionally, preserving the unimproved road area um, preserves the rural nature of Illsley Hill Road. In fact, the variance would actively support that particular purpose of the bylaw. Next slide, please. Um, Again, I would also just add, extending the road given the topography and the work that would have to be done could potentially pose some safety hazards as well. Next slide, please. And this is the mapped um, uh, rare species habitat um, from natural heritage um, up there. And so you can see that it is a mapped area. Next slide, please. Um, and so, as I said, it would not cause substantial detriment to the public good and would benefit the public good it will not nullify or substantially derogate from the intent or purpose of the bylaw. And in fact, it actively promotes that purpose, not being required to construct the remainder of 160 feet or so of the road. And therefore, the second prong is satisfied. And with that, we believe we've complied with the um, criteria of a variance, um, and we would request the board of grant a variance for requiring a constructed road right away in front of the property. And I'm happy to answer any questions. I have no questions. Anybody else from the board? Just uh, prior to the close of the hearing later, I want to get the list of people who are online. I think there's six uh, participants, so I think we're on the grass was on there, but just to have a complete list. Thank you. Um, so if you're if you're online, if you um, type your name into the chat feature, that would be helpful. Thank you. Mail address. So the. Um, Public way that's uh, unimproved. So it's the, was it the National Heritage Endangered Species? <clears throat> the, the, the street and all the lot ones developed, it's going to have to go through MISA. Yes. The whole, just to do the lot, because you, so you have right. a driveway, the house, we septic system, the clearing. All of that. Right. Okay. Right. And we weren't even going to turn around. Oh. So I, I did um, reach out a lot of people on vacations. It's a tough time of year. So I reached out to the, I did reach out to the fire chief. Um, any kind of curb cut for driveway is usually reviewed and approved by the uh, highway superintendent. So I talked to the DPW highway superintendent uh, regarding this and I reached out to the conservation, conservation agent. 
Um, Christine Wallace was on vacation. She usually reviews stormwater reviews, um, so she wasn't available. Um, but I know at the end, due to uh, like uh, the fire department for turn around for pumper trunk, pumper pumper truck or a, a ladder, um, which they are now isn't uh, really um, what they want. And then as far as uh, DPW plowing operations, what's there now is is it's not su sufficient. Um, so when I went out there and we walked the site with the uh, some kind of just you know trying went out and walked it. If we could go back and put the uh, the plan that shows the boundary line that was done by um, Robert Grasso. So after the pavement ends now, it's about 41 feet into the frontage. That's correct. Yep. And that's yeah, that's correct. Yep. So <laughs> the other question I had is for the I know it's preliminary, so they has the um the applicant had a topography done of the lot for design. Are they waiting to see if they get frontage and then move ahead? Right. This is the yeah, key, right? Just so it. to yep. all, all the things that you've yep. said, in fact. If the board were to condition the decision, because of course you can the variance, that we would have to satisfy the fire department to be able to have a turnaround up and you know right about after the property line or something like that. Yep. Um, similarly with um, the the curb cut and whatnot for sure. Okay. Right. Um, so I, we just went on and went on, met John Bush Hills, the highway superintendent, out, and we kind of looked at the end of the road. He. Been working for this home for it seems like ages for me. <laughs> yeah. So he knows every road he's plowed them all, uh, right. good, good and bad. Um, so when we walk off the edge of where the pavement is, where the proposed driveway is going to start, right? There's probably about another forty to forty-five feet that where it's 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 a steady slope at the same pitch almost as the existing roadway before it actually starts to drop off. Yeah. So he's looking at something where, so if this is forty-one feet. Right here, right. You added like another forty feet, and you could come in more with a T driveway. And he'd like to see the the width here is less than twenty feet. He'd like to see anything after this driveway widened out. I think it's at seventeen or eighteen. He wants to see twenty feet wide pavement and extended about forty plus or minus. You know, depending what the design would need to be. Right. But the uh, design engineer would need to do like a turning radius and AutoCAD, sure, to make sure it's sufficient for uh, whatever uh, map. The uh, sand, sander and plow truck and the pumper truck and the uh, hook and ladder, so whatever the largest um, fire truck we have is, so that they can come in and turn around. And then obviously that would cross over into private property. So that if you're going to back in, I, I don't think we measured the stone walls and it gets a little bit wider to the left, but the, there's a ditch on each side, there's a ditch on the left after the utility pole. And you know, there's a drainage. The, the crest of the hill is around here, right? And you can see in front of there before this, there's no drainage over here. So, this is all ponding with mud on both sides of this driveway. But okay, there's a clay ditch that can just continue straight down. And in the ditch line and on the bank, there's existing trees. So, Bush doesn't need to cut any trees, just maybe limb some branches to open it up so you can extend the road. Um, and he, from his standpoint, he'd like to see the ditches cleared and regraded and maybe like some kind of depending on what Christine Wallace's impact uh, or, or review was, you know, rip wrap or something like that to slow down the, the flow of the runoff. Um, and then after the existing driveway, maybe you're going to have to add in some kind of drainage because all this water that runs from here, uh, in the middle, you can see it's all muddy and pond in here. This, this eventually builds up and the hill heads this way. So this runoff runs down this side. It also ponds here, and then it goes into like a makeshift ditch. You like to see some kind of improvement if you're, you're going to add a driveway that you add a, a culvert or a pipe underneath to the water flow, so it's not backing up on the other driveway. Um, and that would have to be designed by your engineer, or whatever. It's a right. pretty size pipe. Uh, I'm certainly not designing that. No, <laughs> yeah. just, just saying. I'm just curious what they do about snow right now. Right. I mean, what's he do with the snow right now? It's hard turning the truck around. That's yeah. what you're expressing okay. me. So something. And, and if you look at it for, you know, I don't think, I don't know if there's a hydrant up there, but any kind of time where you're at the dead end and you have to turn up, I'll right. refer to for Davies more, but there's no hydrants. There's, there's no hydrants out there. No, so there's, there's a lot of hydrants. It's, it's important for people to move uh, pumper trucks and things in and out and unload yeah. pumps to bring water up. Right. Um, 
So we, I mean, we we would be okay. I think we could do it two ways. We'd be okay with a condition that says we would comply with the requirements of being able to the DEW and being able to comply with our staff, right? I mean, that's that makes sense. So then we would work with them to make that happen. Um, or, um, you know, we could go away and work with them, put it on the plan, and then come back. Either way, what well, you know, if that's if that's amenable to the board. I just wanted to bring up the options that I had feedback from conservation conservation agents to say that um you know all this would be on the MEPA. I'm not sure because we don't have site topography with uh, wetland delineations. I'm not sure what the impact is coming up the hill. I think you're pretty good distance away with the end of the road. Yeah, I don't I don't think that there's yep. um and Bob can Bob is on. So Lisa, can, can I speak for a second? There we go. That's why there's Bob. <laughs> Hello. Um, let me just. Uh, stop my video. Okay. Um, for the record, my name is Bob Grassel from Engineering Land Services. Um, right now, that's the existing conditions that the roadway ends there right now. So as you were speaking before about fire protection. So right now, what's the fire protection for the lot to the right and to the left? So adding this driveway would actually... Craig building this driveway would give the fire trucks actually more room to turn in and then turn out. So extending the drive the, the roadway would be more detrimental to the natural in, endangered species uh, program with clearing trees and then the town maintaining additional roadway. Um, right now, there's fire protection for the for the for the town residents right now. I don't see the expense for the client to extend the roadway where he has frontage right now to his lot. Um, right now, there's, there's fire protection for the houses right now. So all he wants to do is add on to the existing roadway. And he's actually, it's always gonna be plowed during the winter because that's how he accesses his, his house. So I don't see the, the additional roadway to benefit the client or benefit the town with more maintenance of a roadway. I just don't see it. That's my comments. Thank you. And uh, we, when this process first started, Craig, you know, contacted me about, you know, purchasing this lot. So we, we went out there with the Board of Health. We did a, uh, like eight test pits, four deep hole, uh, I mean, four um, perk tests. Uh, so we could actually place this, the house in the front or the rear of the property. Um, it perks, so it's a buildable lot. Um, I've actually did a site walk today with the Conservation Commission for two other sites I'm working on for septic system repairs. I talked to the agent and he actually stated to me, why extend the road? I mean, it's, it's more detrimental to the Natural Endangered Species Program. They want less impact to their, their program. Um, what we're proposing to do is just do a driveway with a single family dwelling with a septic system and a private well. Um, extending the roadway would be more work for the, you know, more uh, plowing for the town, uh, more maintenance for the town, and the, and the frontage is there. Um, I don't see adding length to the existing roadway would benefit the town or the um and would be an expense to my client which is he's actually going to propose a, a driveway that will always be plowed where a fire truck could pull up turn around and giving them more distance to turn around right now the fire protection i suppose is adequate because the town, when they accepted the roadway in 1985, 
would extend the roadway for protection of the existing dwellings right now. Um, you know, perhaps, perhaps what could also happen is if you kept the road the same length that it is, we provided exactly. an easement. We provided an easement into the lot for the town related to DPW fire, whatever, for the purposes of turnaround, mm -hmm. and that was constructed in the lot for the turnaround to come back out. A absolutely, I, I, Craig would absolutely agree to that. Any other uh, discussion uh, on the board? <clears throat> so you're saying, I just want to go, go back to what the one of the members said, saying, well, if we extend the road, then there's more fire protection. Well, what's the fire protection right now? So, Bob, I think, I think they heard that question, so I, just, wait a second. No, I just want to, that's, that's the whole thing about this whole case is if, if we extend the road, what more protection are we are we proposing that what's what's there now? Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, the uh, response was they wanted ability. It's not additional fire protection just for that lot. It's for the ability to turn the, the fire apparatus around if they have to take off and go somewhere else. It's, it's the maneuverability of the fire trucks at the end of the roadway, not necessarily just fire protection for that lot. It's the ability to come down the end of a dead end and turn around or EMS or anybody else police and turn around and go back. So it's it's not exactly what I said, the way you're stating it. Okay, and well, what at I, least it's had stated I before, it's they, what the, the owner would, would, would propose an easement for fire vehicles or emergency vehicles to turn around in his driveway, which would always be plowed because that's his access to his house. All right, Bob, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do either of you have any comments, questions? Can you return to the um, image with uh, survey lines? Uh, uh, yeah. I don't know how they turn around better. Yeah. Very careful there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Because the environment makes us That's my problem. All right. We're still we're still vetting out some things. We'll get to the to the chairman to get to the public And then we can go to the board the uh elevation lines. The contours. There you go. There you go. Oh, this is fast. So, so, so one, I think, I think these are off. 147 is pointing at 167. 137 is pointing at 147. Yeah. 177 is pointing at the coin line. Yeah, but generally it keeps going down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah. not to the point. This is this is 10 feet lower, not 30 feet lower. So this indicates it's 30 feet difference. This is only 77. So this, this is 10 feet, not 30 feet. So, right, I don't think we're. Yeah. I don't think we're talking. About, think yeah, yeah, and the, the other part is the GIS. Sorry, I didn't go through you, Mr. Chair. The GIS line, the for the boundaries survey that um, the engineering company and survey company has provided. The lot line is actually in the middle of this driveway, mm -hmm. and that's where the forty-one feet to the end is. Okay. So this is a little bit off um, the GIS. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But if it is, as you can see by the contours, it's, it's still kind of like a plateau there. Yeah. Right. So I was, that's exactly what I was just going to confirm. The member said earlier there is a there's a slight distance that it doesn't start to drop off. That is a gentle slope, and then and then it goes. But the GIS isn't completely accurate. It, to your right, point. it's just a process. Right. Mm -hmm. So I mean, we're ha happy to talk about it. I think that. You know, I guess the question is, we we have not because we're here first because you folks hold the key to the door. Um, happen to have a conversation with the DPW and the fire department, um, and maybe even with the, the agent conservation agent, just to sit down and say, okay, 
with with the least amount of impact, you know, is it better to pull in to the property to turn around to to, to make the the uh, driveway more of a right angle, right, and come out, or is it better to have a little bit further down and then come in to go out? If that's I mean, if that's the issue, we're happy to to continue and have that conversation, or to have a condition be that that's before a building permit could issue that 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 would be required to have happen. Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, just, just um, when we looked at it, you looked at the from stone wall to stone wall, approximately at the end of just past the end of the pavement, it was about forty feet, um, and then the ditches were inside of that. So yeah. fitting like a hammerhead, so that if you pulled in the driveway. You you then need to back out and head farther down the street. You 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 know the, the driver that's proposed is at this angle. So if you pull right. in, how do you back out? Yeah, back, no, you no, know no. it's not I, you're going to come right back out the way you went in. I'm not disagree. That's that's why I suggested that more maybe it comes in and it comes more yeah. at the right angle. So I'm not I'm not disagreeing. You, no, and, and yeah. it's been to, just to you know to, uh, Mr. Grasso's point. If there's a way. I know there's a stone wall and there's a beautiful beech trees on each side that. We're, we're placed there, um, and, and I, I am aware from the boundary survey that the lot lines in the middle of the boundary driveway that's a separate issue. But I don't think anybody would want to see those trees cut down. So if, if there's a way that we can make this work with a minimal extension that suffices for somebody to you know pull it to the end and back into the driveway and pull out, or pull into the driveway and back to the end and, yeah. and keep going. Um, and you know we have to uh, review with the town DPW and the um, project manager that reduced stormwater impact and see whatever best man management practices there are that we can do for the drainage on each side and the end of the roadway. Yeah, I mean, toward, after the board obviously hears from everybody, I think that it would be beneficial to everybody to have that conversation and then come back to continue and then have a conversation if the board is inclined to approve it subject to that. Perfect. I don't want to go through all of that yes. for, yep. if that's not going to happen, but if the board's inclined to go that way, then I'd like the opportunity to, to make that happen and then come back to satisfy the board. But uh, obviously you have other work to do right now. Okay. okay, thank you. All right, come next. Uh, Sorry, to go go ahead. Ahead. this question, but um, taking out, um, I'm going to put aside environmental things for one second only because I want to understand the legal rights of the property. Um, the town approved uh, a roadway that extends, as we said, to the key here, right? If there were no environmental issues, if cost wasn't an issue, would the applicant be able to, by right, extend the public roadway? It is to allow for, yeah, but, but sorry, construct a roadway to allow for access to the property. So, okay. Through you, Mr. Chairman, I'm not an attorney, so you know, this is just from experience, not legal advice. Right. Typically, in other cities and towns, when a public way is accepted, maybe years ago, yeah. and it's un unfinished, yeah. and the pavement ends, it usually ends at different property lines of parcels that have been improved because they were required by that town or city uh, and the DPW to improve the roadway through their project. Right. Yeah. And then, like uh, I'll give Havel for example, Havel has a lot of paper streets undeveloped like this. Let's say they're flat though, and they go through permitting. Everybody who then goes to the next lot, from my understanding and experience, typically has to extend water, if there's water, yeah. sewer, drainage, infrastructure, telephone poles, you know, ditches. You know, this is this is very minimal. Sure. This is under base of a grading under base and sub base for roadway uh, binder and mm -hmm. pavement and ditches and best management practices, whatever the, the town thinks is the best thing to do, if that's what they want but from the town's perspective. Other roadways and other cities, it's not just the pavement, it's, not, it's, it's everything, all the infrastructure, the gas, all that has to be extended to, to town or city standards um, as they would be public way that before they accept it. Uh, as it's built or constructed. So to, to legitimize the frontage so that people can make it a buildable line. So and that's in generalized terms. So yep, please yep, don't yep, 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 yep. Okay. If I misspoke, uh, I'll be glad to take any feedback from them. Generally speaking. 
Now it's open to the public to address the board on uh, this issue. And stand up and identify yourself. Hi. And address. My name is Paul Regalia. My daughter, that, uh, that's my driveway. Uh, can we go back to the first current police? And the same as 41 feet of road there. They sold four pieces of property up there within the last, let's say, five, 10 years. They surveyed this road countless number of times. What he's using as a reference is a telephone pole. At the end of that pavement is where the marker is for the property, and it's been marked with white paint, which I did. It's been there for since I've owned that piece of property since 1989. So where they're saying it's 41 feet, there's four and a half feet of pavement. There's not 41 feet. If you go back to the topography one, the other one, that's the correct line. You will see my driveway. That is the correct line. Not what they're saying is this 41 feet of pavement. There is no 41, it's four and a half feet. I think everybody else in this room had to have 200 foot of road frontage also. And to say that it's an expense, this gentleman already tried to buy my piece of property from me. Another neighbor's piece of property from him. So for him to say that it's gonna cost him too much, maybe he shouldn't be buying his piece of property. I don't know. But everybody else had to put the road in. And if he wants to access that piece of property, just like everybody else in this town, he should. But to say that it's an expense, he's up there throwing millions of dollars around. He doesn't want to have to pay for a road. He knew going into this that he had to get all the permits for it. Now he's trying to get away not getting the permits. He's no special than anybody else in this town. And he's looking for something special. Now, if you let him put that driveway in and he'll not be able to turn around and the fire truck won't be able to block my driveway, they're going to block my neighbor's driveway, and they're probably going to block everybody on that hill. God forbid something else happens. Town, did that make them liable? I don't know. At the bottom of that, there's a stream that goes from over on Ash Street, and it feeds the reservoir from Newbury Court. I don't know if they'd be too happy about this also. Plus, I have wetlands that are within 100 feet away. He wants to build this house. Has anybody looked at that? You went up and looked at uh, Patrick, Mr. Higgins. You went up and looked at it? Yes. Did you see the post that's been up there since 1983 that is telling you that this is the property line? I visualized that the, uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, I visualized the improvements that were made in occupation versus what's depicted on the plan. And that's a separate concern uh, related to, it sounds like there's a, an access issue of a private property or a boundary dispute. So it would, you know, occupation and, and what's on the plan are and two different things. So if, if he wants to put a house in there with the 200 foot of road trying to change just like anybody else, any infrastructure that goes with it. But right now they're using a the telephone pole as a marker. Excuse me, Chairman, can I speak? Yes. Well, my name is Robert Grassley. As I said before, I've been a Massachusetts land, registered land surveyor since 1997. I've been practicing surveying for, since 27 years. I went out there, located the boundary. There's a stone wall, um, and that's a GIS layout. That's an overlay. That's a, that is not accurate at all. That's just an overlay for assessing purposes for. Did you have the survey up yet? Yeah. I actually did a survey there, and I put my stamp on that plan that you see on two sheets here. I'm a registered land surveyor. I put my stamp on that. I stand behind that, and with the board of registration, um, that green line is totally inaccurate. What I show as a property line actually goes to that center line of the existing driveway to the right um, to the existing dwelling. Um, so what, I'm not sure what, what this, this gentleman is trying to say that 
that I am not right of what I'm doing. I actually went out there with a um, total station, a GPS unit, and I located the monuments of a controlled survey, the accepted town roadway, located drill holes, iron rods, iron pipes, and locked into the complete survey control. And my plan is exactly, and I stand behind that on my, on my stamp. Okay, thank you very much. Have you had an independent survey done, paid by you? There's been four points. Yes. Do you have one by you? I, no, I'm going by a record survey with that. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, excuse me. Just when he said, I let you talk. It's my turn to talk. No, I'm in truck. Right? Okay. <laughs> but but your question was to the resident, correct? Not the problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So no, it's to him. I asked him. That's well, yeah. the question that wasn't to you. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, sorry, Mr. Grasso. Grasso. It was not to you. Okay. Correct. Okay. So you don't have an independent survey you can show us today? No, I don't. Thank you. Okay, now. I'd say six, eight months ago, somebody surveyed up there in the little pink flag to right where that white uh, post is. They all sort of disappeared all of a sudden when somebody started looking at this piece of property. Did you put those pink flags up there? I absolutely put those pink flags out there. I I'm am sorry. a registered land surveyor under the, of, the, of the state of Massachusetts. And I, and I hold my record. I have no uh, records against me. I've been in business for over 27 years. I have never, um, I stand by my stamp and whatever I've put out there, that green line is wrong. That's just an overlay from a GIS data form. That's just an overlay. That is not a boundary survey. That's an overlay. Okay, okay thank you. I think we've heard your view and I think we can move on from here. So okay. thank you. Any anybody else? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, I live. My name is Richard Winnick. I live at one um, Isley Hill Road. Um, one of my concerns is a mention about on both sides of the road and the runoff and what you're proposing to do. To we have a water runoff that goes through our property. There's a tube, and I think it goes down to the reservoir. Um, I can't see how that wouldn't affect the flow of the water. If you're taking out branches and on both sides of the road, it, it just yeah. What will that do? Yeah, what will that do? Uh, this is the first I've heard of that, but um, I think the branches are only to off the trees that hang over the, the yeah. over the right of way. Um, yep. The, the, there's there's rough ditches right now. Yeah. The water does go downhill that way. If the break is a little bit farther back, um, and right now it's ponding. Um, on both sides of the existing driveway, it, it ponds there. So I can imagine during heavy rains, it would sheet flow across the pavement, could cause an icing issue. So any the, the idea is when Bush saw that, is like, yeah, it'd be great if the ditch on the left got cleaned. There are no other things that towns do where they permit through conservation to do ditch cleaning and regrading. So with this proposed improvements here, he said this would be a good time to clean this out so it's more efficient. They can add best management practices to it to slow down the runoff. To catch any sediment and add a floor bay or something at the end of the roadway so it mitigates what goes downhill into the wetlands. So there would be a filtering process, which isn't there now. Now it's just sheet flow over ground, road and dirt. And then and if you look, if you actually walk past it and get through the greenway, there's just piles where people did, uh, dumped off loads of fill that was left over from different sites. Maybe it was probably not good fill for their yards. Maybe it was, you know, a little silty or something. And there's just piles of silt that are at the there that have been grown over. So it's, you know, it's, it's not uh, original. It's been worked a little bit, you know, you know when you walk down the break of the hill. <laughs> so you're telling everybody that everybody's been t dumping on town land? There's been, there's a bunch of, it's obvious that it's not original. Why hasn't it been enforced if it's been dumping on town land? I, I'm not yeah. sure of the date of when they dumped it or if it was allowed or not. All I know is this looks like there's mounds of dirt back there that are not original inside the right of way. That's town property. That's that's a right of way. That's that's town owned. Yes, it's not relevant to this meeting. Absolutely, it's relevant. I'd say it's not relevant. Anybody else? Uh, yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Judy Love. I live at Fort Elsley Hill Road. 
Um, I did not receive a notification on this meeting, and I'm wondering why. Um, what is the buffer zone for a butter? 300 feet. So I, I live well within 300 feet of, of the abutters that received notification, and we did not receive a notification. I um, just want to bring that to, to the board's okay. attention. But it's 300 feet from the property, so you wouldn't be 300 feet from the abutter that received notice. So from the abutter, you don't have it. You don't have it's not It's not 300 feet, 300 feet. It's 300 feet from the property. Okay, okay. Um, secondly, um, it was mentioned about environmental impact and trying to minimize environmental impact and having to put a road in would, would create more harm, especially to wildlife. Well, I, um, I would like to say that doing nothing would not impact the wildlife and the environment and doing doing even minimal, putting, you know, just putting a house in and giving them a right of way. We're gonna we're gonna disturb this land, all all the um, wildlife that lives up there, the environmental, uh, you know, just the beauty of of the place that that we all live in. And what's to say that once they get their approval and they have this, there's how many more acres up there that's available for sale that we're not gonna have to be back here again. Now we have a precedent that this is this has been allowed, so they'll just they'll ride the coattails of that to get their approval for the next lot that they want to that they want to do. And so now we have a development going on, and that's not what Hillsley Hill is about. The zoning board could appeal uh, approval to if it's not a precedent that's a law okay. and cannot be used for the next development or something like that. So this is not exactly the okay. Can I address that issue for a second? Okay. If this 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 proposal is for a one single family dwelling, and if what she's talking about adding additional lots, that would have to be a roadway to create frontage through Craig's lot, which is he owns the end of the right of way. So there would be no more houses at his lot he owns the end of isley hill road he owns the, the that little that green piece uh that little horseshoe on the left on the on the i don't know the screen that i'm looking at he owns that there is no more way of isley hill road you can't get right. any more lots all right uh, uh, can, I, can i just comment on that yes ma'am they own the end of the Ilsley Hill Road right now. And so they're going to be impacted just like your client would be impacted should somebody else come before the board later on down the road. So what makes your client any more special than than um, our neighbors right now? That doesn't, because, that, that's not an argument for me. Because he owns all yes. along Isley Road into the end of Isley Road. There is no more lots created. We all own 200 feet along the other yeah, hill road. One second, just to diffuse this through through you, Mr. Chairman. I think this can flip the boundary survey. Yeah, I should say we're Mr. Yeah, the, the, get away from this. We'll go back to the uh, site plan. Yeah, here. please pull up my plan. Yes. Okay. So, and then if you can pan it over to the right a little bit. Yeah. So, I would call it like a dovetail at the end there. So they own that property is contiguous around the end of Isley Hill from, from the plan to the survey that um, Mr. Grousing did. And the only other people who could develop would be on the other side, which would be the uh, McCormick. You know, and if they wanted to. 10 Isley Hill Road. Yes. You know, the only person that has frontage at the end is the McCormick's. The other two lots don't appear to have any frontage on Isley Hill. The, uh, down and then and the other family I can't see. Uh, Maybe, Mr. Chair, if I could just so the road, this little road is accepted as a public road right now, and then it stops. So you can't continue the public way because it's it would have to have town meeting approval to have a public way go further than that. And that's why I pointed that out when we first started is that. The road stops, it ends, and then there's the, the end of this property comes around and it doesn't just keep continuing. So that's what the town accepted. And in order for the road to keep continuing, you would have to have the town accepted again. 
Okay. Yeah, but regardless, the impact that it's going to have on the environment, the wildlife, you, yeah. you can't get you, you can't get beyond that. Well, you can't you can't get past that. Yeah. And one house is going to have a major impact. Putting an extra putting an extra how many hundred feet of road it is minimal compared to the impact that the that what your original plan is looking to do. And that's that's my stance. So and, and certainly you're entitled to that opinion. The the property owner now or in the future. It, you know, it's almost twice the size, not quite twice the size of what a legal lot is, and it has a public way in front of it that just isn't continued. The town meeting voted in 1985 to accept it as a public way. So developing one house on the lot versus developing a house on the lot and improving the road, which you'd be permitted to do, is a much greater environmental impact than just developing one house. That would be honest. When the town approved this at town meeting in 1985, these lots were laid out, correct? Um, I believe that's to be the case. Yeah, yeah. so then, I mean, these lots were laid out. Anyone that owns them has the ability to sell them to whomever. It's, I mean, it, they were developed as, the, this was set up as a site plan back, I mean, 40 years ago. And people have, just like you have every right, who sell your home, they have the right to sell this lot. Sure. And, and just like you, you have that. So you can't take that economic I'm uh, away from that. somebody. I mean, there is impact if you put a shed on your property, there's economic or environmental impact if you do anything like that. So that is not, if this lot, if this subdivision or whatever you want to call it, the correct terminology, when it was originally approved, was put there, then th they have the right to develop this into what the, the zoning allows for. And the 200 foot of the road from the Right, not, not, not with, yeah. not, not giving them a fair piece of 41 feet. So that's that's really not your concern what it, somebody can or can't afford. That's what Roy said. You're not recognized. If, if we can tone it down and, and just speak through the chairman and we're not talking back and forth to each other just to reduce the, uh, the level. Yeah. And the other thing through you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, go back to um, Attorney Mead, is maybe to the possibility to obey some concerns for future development on this lot. If your client would be amenable to a deed restriction that the lot cannot be further um, developed or, or, or broken up uh, into yeah. other lots. It couldn't be anyway. Yeah. Well, just to obey concerns, if there's a deed restriction on it in perpetuity, it, and it's recorded. It's, that's it. It's just people are concerned about future development. So, yeah, I, I, every board is different. I haven't appeared before you in a really long time, so I usually like to hear all the questions and then come back up at the end yeah, instead sorry. of the instead of the back and forth. But, working through it. Sorry. Uh, certainly, he would consider that. Um, we've okay. already talked about. It. All right. Thank you. Any other yes, sir? Sorry, my son here. Uh, Reaching through a little step, son. We have property up on the hill. We've been approached by the lady's client to purchase that property and has told me face to face that the purchasing of this lot is the key to develop that piece of property. Every one of these people here had to put in what they had to put in. This man does not need or deserve a variance. Fire, rescue, police, everybody that needs to access the top of that hill needs a safe, secure, approved roadway to be able to access it. I would ask the board to hold this person to the same and standards that you hold that you hold everybody else to, whether it's environmental, whether there's a business plan involved here, whether he has money or he doesn't have money, the requirement is to own the fee. I've been here 55 years. Rick's been here. For us. <laughs> and I'm sure he's going to stand up and say something. But I want you people to understand and know we have been approached with that piece of property is the key, the lynch key, to develop the top of that hill. Okay? We, at this point, 
Do not have any plans on moving forward. We're going to talk to a green belt to protect that area. A substantial monetary loss to the family, which is neither here nor there. All these people are trying to do is protect that area. 200 feet of frontage, 200 feet of roadway, then that's what you need to turn to. A fancy lawyer, all these woods, they're not changing the reality of the situation, folks. So are you saying that if Excuse me, Mr. Chief. Could I have your name one more time? My name is Marcel. They are C E L. The last name is Reed. Did, did, did you sign the? Uh... We would never again perform this. Okay, sorry about that. That's what I'm looking for. Here. All right, thank you. No worries. Marcel, Marcel what's your last name again? Rubio. R O U T H I E R. I live at 169 Bachelor Street. Okay, thank you. I'll have you sign this if you guys sure. want And my name is on the deed for the property at the top of that hill. We could make a lot of money. We're not looking to. You're having shades pulled over your eyes. Ask this gentleman to put him to your feet. That's all I have for you. I'd be happier if that were the case, if they leveled those trees and yeah, uh, put an academy on there, as we used to say, black top and destroyed that area. And then he could put in the driveway and build a house. Would that please you? It would please me that the services of the town to get out there, service the people as needed, and get out safely. I applaud that. I applaud that. All right, then a little turnaround would be okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I'm Joanne Winnett, one is Lee Hill Road. I'm just curious, the curiosity question why her client doesn't find a piece of property that's easier to develop? This is very costly to develop, looking for variance and spending a lot of money on attorneys and architects and engineers. And I go back to, I believe it is what he said. It's the key. He, he's looking to develop other pieces of property up there. Yeah. Yeah. We all know that. And we don't want it. Yeah. Yeah. Richard went in again to one piece of the road. So somebody mentioned the deed restriction. I, I think that would be a bare minimum. That's a good start. The deed restriction. And then still hold him to the same standard as everyone else. It's, I, I think that's it's not unreasonable for well, us to ask. I don't know what the standards were in 1984 when this was laid out. And they, it was decided not economical to pay to pay the last 350 feet because there's only one lot there and there was 40 feet for a driver. So why should they have paid to do it? I think the town made a good decision if the town made that decision. So now the calendar rolls on and the guy wants to build a house. I don't see why. But, but the standard is the standard. It wasn't that then. I think it wasn't then, but I don't know for sure. 1984. I've it been chairman now. here for 150 years, <laughs> but not back in 1984. But, but it is now. So yes. I just want to reiterate that that is the standard now. Exposed to fact. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, Thank you. If you all of us had to have 200 feet. I want to call on this gentleman. Yeah. I'm Howard Zimmer and I live on eight Hillsborough Hill Road and I bought we bought we bought a property in 19 you see the 83 or 84 the latest and at that point the 200 foot frontage was in effect. Okay. That's I don't know if that's what you just I didn't agree. You just yeah, said. I don't know when they constructed. I think the constructive word came in after that. Do you know? I, I don't I think we did it, okay. you know, I, I don't recall when the constructed came in. Okay. No, I'm just reiterating when they when in 1984 you had to have 200 feet. Okay. And if it's still in law, then he should have 200 feet too. He has 200 yeah. feet. Yeah, and he can build 200 but feet. But it's not quote constructed unquote. The time he had 200 feet. Now. The laws changed since 
uh, that lot was laid out, I think. Mr. Chairman, can I, can I add to that? Uh, yeah. I have uh, allowed snow on the North Lido Road now for 50 years. Uh, and one of the, uh, the snow is about 16 feet wide. And it's a clay base underneath the majority of Hillsley Hill when we did some reconstruction here, I don't know, 20 years ago. Uh, when you put down gravel, it just sunk right into the clay. So that had uh, fabric under my, underneath most of Hillsley Hill. Yeah. Uh, but it's 16 feet wide. Uh, occasionally in the winter, somebody leaves a car there, and I can just barely get around it to pick up. And the truck did not get up there. So it's a, uh, uh, it's a hazard as far as the uh, width of the road. And when you get up to the end, if you, uh, if you uh, extend the road, you make it wider than the 16 feet it should be made to uh, the planning board specs. Uh, so you need a 20 foot road and Far as I turn around, a good example of uh, when I was on the planning board, uh, we extended uh, Mechanic Street for the last house, and we put it in, in the uh, Hammerhead turnaround, in which you make the road extra wide and you make a wide entrance to the driveway. And that's a uh, uh, via, you can make a turnaround. Uh, that's a good example of the, uh, the use. Uh, and power uh, the slope. Yeah, Rickford. Uh, okay. uh, Aquas Hill is built to the maximum slope allowed. Uh, so, mm -hmm. certainly you can send uh, Hillsley Hill Road some more. I, I look at things a little bit different than most people in that I'm interested in open space and forest land and I recommend anytime you have a chance to put in a fire road. It doesn't necessarily have to be a paved road, but it has to be a road for That's fire true. protection. Uh, you are just hoping to get a chance that you don't have a fire. And you need to get fire equipment in there. So that's uh, I'm a big believer in fire roads. Um, I haven't been on the planning board and the ZBA and and uh, worked for the highway department. I hesitate to give some of the variance for less than the full frontage that's required. Yeah. By studying them, Rick, I would see. Can I just address a couple things, yes, Mr. Chair? Um, so I do want to reiterate that it has more than a 200 feet of frontage small left. It's just not constructed frontage, which is what the bylaw currently requires and defines as frontage. So it does have the length of frontage. I also want to say my client is interested in the deed restriction, as we mentioned before. Um, I represent my client on the permitting side. He may or may not talk to all of these people. I don't know the answer to that because it's not what I do. So, but I, I do think it's interesting that he'd be interested in a deed restriction for one family home. So um, that would control the fire access, DPW and all of that other stuff. So um, I just wanted to point that out as we talk about the entrance. With a, a question, uh, maybe for one of our would be lawyers here. Uh, as an ADU, uh, would that still be allowed in a single family deed restriction? So, um, a well, that's interesting because now they are a protected, by, by right. um, yeah. okay, protected use under section three. Um, so you would be allowed to have an ADU. Um, the requirement for the protected use is that it can't be more than 900 square feet. 
mm -hmm. or half the size of the home, whichever is less. What so, an exactly. accessory dwelling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and two weeks ago, the governor signed into law a new um, statute, new provision under 40A, Section 3, which um, allows them as an exempt use if they are in any district that allows single family home, if it's 900 square feet or less, um, and have to have a parking space unless you're half mile to the train station or a bus station. So anyone can do that. By right, right, by, by right, that's a good stand. They have to get a building permit from Sam, yeah. Um, but they don't have to come to any port. Mm -hmm. right. 900 square feet is the max, so mm -hmm. though, of the, yeah, or half, half, the, half, size half the, the size of the house, or 900 square feet, whichever is less. And Lisa, they also have to upgrade their septic system. Well, right, so they have to meet, they have to meet all the oh, other sorry. requirements that you would have to get to build a you know, habitable dwelling, so septic. You know, building code, dimensional requirements. So, if you had a, a four bedroom septic and you had a three bedroom house, you could put an accessory. You could well, you, yeah, with any right. for with one. Assuming you meet the reasonable dimensional requirements, yes. things like that. Right. It's basically an affordability component of the, the law. Well, I'll check it in. I mean, yeah. I think that the governor would argue, and I think the legislature would argue, um, and many of us who represent municipalities would say it's an alternative. Um, housing opportunity, not because you can charge rent. So, it's but it's creating, housing, yeah, it's creating more housing opportunities yeah. at different levels. So, yeah. adding more development to that property, basically. But, but I, 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 I this, is, this is a, this this is a big yeah. Yeah. This is across the state of Massachusetts. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just clarifying for my. Does the lady in the blue sweater have a question? Is it Yeah. Hi, my name is Marquita Zimmerman, and I live on Eight Hills Hill Hill Road. Um, and I just might want to air my biggest concern is Ilsley Hill Road. And I really am anxious, and we've had instruction from all of us, obviously, over the years. But Ilsley Hill is going to take a beating when you start having construction going up and down Ilsley Hill Road. It's going to be a real bad scene for all of us. Yeah. And I'm very concerned about it only from the history of Ilsley Hill Road in my. 45 or 46 years that we've been there. Um, the road itself is not great. It has had some repairs over the last, you know, number of years. It's trying to the Richard Thurlow has taken care of us all the years. Thank goodness for the Richard Thurlow. Um, I'm just really anxious um, about the impact this is going to have. We thought we were done. You know, we really thought this was over and all the houses are there. And I understand your clients um, need to have a house there, but I'm really concerned. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Rick. Uh, you spoke about uh, maybe putting a clause in the deed that cannot be put subdivided. Uh, when I was on the planning board, um, one of the subjects that came up was uh, when they, <clears throat> other than the form A law, uh, and we started to do some development work, but, <clears throat> um, we as a planning board uh, could require offsite improvements. Anybody that has the idea that we're going to subdivide and create some more new laws, uh, I would be of the opinion that those leaves will go be upgraded. 16 feet wide does not allow two trucks to pass. The truck's eight feet wide, and then you've got mirrors sticking out, and you'll be running right on the edge of the pavement, and you'll be breaking down the pavement. So a, any development that goes up, the traffic would be on Ilsley Hill Road. If in my opinion, you got, I don't know how many feet in Ilsley Hill Road is, it, but it's, uh, it's gonna be a very major expense to anybody that thinks that they are going to subdivide and create anything more than just this one single lot. 
I just want to say, I live at one Isley Hill Road. That road's right in front of my driveway. Am I going to be able to get out of my driveway if there's all these trucks coming and going, big trucks doing all this work? And on the other side, if you know if they did expand the road, I just spent a lot of money doing the front of my yard. Where does that go? Uh, that's going to be lost? That's going to be my loss? So. Anything else from anybody? Okay, um, but, uh, Mr. Chairman, maybe we could check with anybody online. Still have uh, six out people online. Okay. Okay. Oh. Oh. So I'll uh, have the motion, okay? Patrick? Oh. You're going to take those down. Yeah. Yes, I can. Motion for me. Amen. Take a motion. Four. Three minutes. Actually, uh, before we go further, I agree. Based off of some of the feedback, and I haven't, we haven't got feedback from all the town, like uh, Christina Wallace was a uh, project manager, did stormwater. Just yeah. to get her concerns, but, you know. Okay, we need that. She can do that later. Can we that condition? Yeah, we have a condition. This is where the board talks amongst itself, but you can hear us. <laughs> do you want to do a straw poll? Yeah. Just to see where we're at, see. So I would be, I'd, I'd be, I would be very interested before we go forward with understanding yeah. any yeah. potential needs or restrictions. I didn't know what you said. I'd be very interested in, in seeing what the deed restrictions would look like yeah. and the potential yeah. improvements. And given that, you'd be okay. Yeah. Uh, so I would depend on what they, what they would say. Thank you. Me? We ask them first. Okay, go for it. Me too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have three to. Nothing. As usual, my concerns are that I would probably want to go get more information, vet out some of the issues, uh, and clarify things so that we could have a, a very clean vote so nothing's left out. Okay. It's very detailed, uh, comprehensive. <clears throat> so okay. I, I you know I well, wouldn't mind taking a straw poll unofficially just, just to see where we're at and see if we're all on if we're heading the same direction or not. We just did. Can I ask a question? Yes. Go ahead. Um, Chris Weil, 150 Main Street, on um, select wood. My only consideration, there's a lot of issues here. Um, you implied at the beginning of the meeting that this, this was going to be continued, and that's what I would encourage you to do and use the service of the town legal council to I explore said, a number of these issues. I never said that. I don't know who said that, but I did not say that. I said implied. I didn't say stated. I'm just requesting that you continue your hearing so yeah. you have appropriate time to request town council's assistance with this. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Yeah, if I could uh, offer a comment, Angus Jennings, town manager. Uh, I, I also had expected you would continue the hearing past tonight. If you were intending to close the hearing, I would want to uh, say that at a meeting in June that the applicant did state at a public meeting of the planning board an intent to build two houses on this lot. I would have preferred, oh, here we go. I would have preferred to have a continued hearing. I could put the meeting minutes, the meeting recording, but if, you, if I think you were going to close, you need to know that. That was stated at a public meeting. Thank you. But that's Thank you. not relevant well to this question. Yeah, you can only build one house. That's that's the town law. No, no, no. So if I can uh, uh, through you, through you, Mr. Chairman, I'm gonna step back a second. There's we have something else in the book, um, which I can get clarification, but uh through special permit, people are, you can have two reduced frontage lots that have 80, 80 feet of frontage on the public way. Okay. Okay. So maximum two abutting each other. So I'm not sure how you fit that on the slot given the condition, but I think the impact through MISA review and other things might be 
detrimental, yeah. but I, I, part of the deed restriction would be that yeah, it wouldn't be That's right. never go to special permit for reduced runners lot, not for the subdivided, and, you know, whatever other things town council would add in. So I think this needs to be vetted out more fully. So I'm gonna uh, while I'm talking, if we take an unofficial poll, my my uh, my conditions are conditions raised by the highway superintendent mm -hmm. and the fire chief as far as the ability to better turn and maneuver large equipment at the end of the road so they can turn around and get in and out of the driveway and turn around and go back the other way. Uh, and maybe, so I think you need to extend the road to do that so that the driveway comes in at uh, something that makes it more, uh, the design would say now is not gonna work. You know, for the proposed driver to do it, a turnaround. You're just going to pull in and pull back out at an angle. So it has to be some of the roads extended like 40 to, let's say, somewhere that's reasonable and then has the least amount of impact to anything that's downhill from there. So you're still at the top of the hill. It's the same as if the roadway as it is now. It, it just, it's paved, there is a little bit more runoff, but they can mitigate that by improving the ditches and, and the, and the uh, best management practices to contain drainage. I think we so that's where I'm at. So other people might be fine with just granting it as it is, but I, I wouldn't move forward without making any the improvements that are requested I I would safety and welfare. Okay. So Mr. Chair, I think I think I've kind of got the flavor of this. So I would ask, um, what is your next meeting? When we schedule it. That's when we got to schedule it, right? So yeah. um, we'd ask a continuance to that as soon as we're gonna figure out what that is. Um, Give us a few weeks to meet with, as I had said earlier, with um, the DPW fire department conservation agents to make sure that they're kind of all on board with that. Um, one one house lot is not going to improve all of the existing drainage issues on Ilse Hill Road. Let's be clear about that. Mm -hmm. This isn't a subdivision. This is one house lot that exists on a public way that we want to build a house, right? So. We know there may be some impacts related to doing a driveway that can have a turnaround, but we're not going all the way down Hill Road and, and resolving stormwater issues, right, or current conditions. Um, and then uh, proposed language for um, a deed restriction. <clears throat> so we'd ask for a continuance um, so that we can come back to the board with that. Mm -hmm. and win, and now you want to continue it. No, he, I've got two members who I believe would prefer to continue it. We all uh, agree with him, so right? At least four, with the restrictions that you've agreed to. Okay, so uh, well, we, we, I'm not going to make a motion to we better know and talk to town. I would like to talk to town council a couple things that and that all the language was detailed. Okay. And then from through you, Mr. Chairman. The, the the least amount of impact to the sheet flow going down the hill into the wetlands is to not pave the entire two hundred feet of drainage oh, down the hill. So, so that I understand what people said, but I, I'm trying to be uh, there's That's a balance. The least trying to find the balance. There's balance in that. Yeah, yeah I, I think I I thought it was pretty clear that these two gentlemen were <clears throat> not going to participate in a positive vote. Right. So who said at the outset you need to push? Right. Exactly. Right. So. Uh, um, so with that, and I, I appreciate hearing those comments from Mr. Higgins because we, it, it doesn't make sense for all of the reasons we stated. So, um, so we would like to continue. So perhaps we can um, so debate when maybe two to three weeks out. Um, yeah, I think three is probably going to be ideal. Lisa, yeah. Lisa, can I can I address one issue? The sure. chairman, can I? I just one of the That's members had one of the members had stated that about two reduced lot frontages. You can only by the planning board regulations, you cannot have two reduced lot frontages together. In other words, you could have one, then you have to have another regulated two and uh, the required frontage and then a reduced frontage. You cannot have back to back reduced frontage lots so this lot cannot have two lots it's true through you mr chairman in response it is a uh, through special permit through the planning board maximum of two lots reduced frontage abutting each other are allowed 
Uh, as I understand it. So we're not here to have that. So I just anyway. We're not asking for a special permit. We're just saying no, I, I, what the planning board regulation says. You cannot have two redu reduced lots frontage together. You cannot so have. Not, we're actually not here to have that conversation right now. So, okay. Yep. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I'm on the fifth box, oh, oh, so maybe the twelfth. Uh, that's a Thursday. Is it today, Thursday? Oh, today's Wednesday. Today Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. So it's it's been that kind of week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. It has been. How about the fourth? I can't. Fourth is fine with me. Fourth? Do you know what that fourth. is? Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, no, fourth. We're just talking about the fourth. So we would request a continuance to September 4th at 7 p.m. Uh, okay. I'm okay with it. It's Labor Day week. We'll be saying it's traveling. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to just be coming back from Europe. On the thirty first. So maybe we should push that to the eleventh. Can we push? What do you? You can't. Uh... Well, and then I come back. To, I haven't been in the office for two weeks. <laughs> yeah. So would it? Five days to change your uh, Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what a five days. Right. So what do you want? What do? can we do? The eleventh? Is that too okay. far up? No, I think that's fine. Eleventh. Eleventh. Okay. Good. Uh, okay. Yeah, there's chairman. Do you make a motion or something like that to continue? Yes. Okay. Do it. September 11th at 7 p.m.? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we continue this hearing until uh, September 11th, 7 o'clock in the second floor meeting from here at the town hall. Chairman. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 You're Dennis. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for your input. No, no, so from tomorrow. Yes, yeah, so we'll do it. Okay. No, no, so Before everybody leaves, if anybody hasn't signed this, tomorrow. can I just have your, your name and answer? Do you care at this talk? Excuse me. Um, I'm going to do a final. Yeah. So I'm going to do it now. I'm going to do it now. I'll spot you out. A lot of people there. They're all leaving. Thank you. I know who that is. Yeah, that's um. Damn. Oh. I'm a yeah, this person. Yeah, and all that. Does it really want voices? Is this the zoning board? Yeah. Yeah. I just feel in here about the sleep of my kids. My mother, Chris, fell. We don't know how to do it. Turn it off. I know, yeah, over. Ambulance. I don't want to. I just came from the hospital. No one really knows. 75 ish. Yeah. All right, now we have 30 minutes. So, if I could, before you get the minutes, and I, I should have done this right at the outset before the meeting started, I just wanted to introduce Jen Geary for the board. Thank you, Jen. So, uh, Jen is in uh, actually a newly created position that was put into this year's budget, uh, and it's uh, an expanded role from uh, what Joan did, which was uh, inspectional services with support of the ZBA. Jen's role is uh, much broader than that. Uh, she's the land and building uh, services administrator. She provides support to the uh, planning board, conservation commission, ZBA, oh, yeah. inspectional yeah. services. Thank you for and CPC, uh, oh, boy. full time, five day a week <laughs> position. Cool. And uh, we're delighted to have her. She brings a lot of great experience. Awesome. I'm going to turn it over to you in a minute just to introduce yourself. But I just <laughs> wanted to 
make sure you all are aware there has to be, you know, change in staffing, not just health, yeah. but job description, yeah. hours. So, so it's it's a terrific uh, thing. I think it's uh, been really got a lot of support for the select with the finance committee through the budgeting process and at a staff level, tremendous amount of support, partly because we now have five days a week coverage for offices that up until, uh, you know, for, for decades, Friday, there was no service or maybe reached stand on a cell phone, but there's now a support person. So for things like uh, certified mailings or things that come up, uh, if someone's out at a conference, out of sidewalk, to have, to have, you know, that, that staffing level to actually provide an improved level of service is something we're very happy about. Do you want to just tell the board a little about your background, the other council you work with? Um, so I have worked for municipalities for about eight years now. I started off in Newberry actually working for Sam um, in the billing department. I also worked for conservation at that time and FinCom. Um, and then uh, about 2020, I moved on to Salisbury, um, where I was in the CDBG um, community development department with, um, in the planning department and doing conservation. And then from there, I moved back into building and did uh, board of health and zoning as well. Um, so I have extensive experience, you know, working with boards and, and doing the minutes and then all the things that come with it. So I'm here to support you and whatever you need. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. That's exactly what we you play some fun Somebody would wear many hats, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, so we, uh, Paul's question was the replace the planning board. So we had, we, we've had a really hard time keeping someone in the planning board support role because yeah. it was budgeted at like six hours, it was either six or eight hours a week. And it's very hard. We've had some good people in that role over the years, but you can't keep them. It's hard to get someone in that role. Uh, and then if you get them, they don't stay very long because it's six or eight hours a week. And even if they're there, they're juggling it with three other part-time jobs. So that was, uh, and, and then conservation up until Jen started a couple of weeks ago has never in the history of the town ever had uh, any support beyond the agent. Uh, so so it, it is really providing a new level of service for, for multiple departments. So great. We were delighted to hire someone with Jen's credentials because she really brings a lot to the table. Did we ever back to Leah's position? Uh, yeah, we did. We hired a new town planner, Sue Brown, uh, a couple of years ago. She's been terrific. Unfortunately, yeah. she retired. She just retired. <laughs> we, yeah. so we're, we posted the job about uh, three or four weeks ago. If you're if you know anyone who's qualified, we've gotten a number of applications, and we'll be starting interviews in the next um, in the next, next couple of weeks on our new town planner. And conservation agent left as well, and I uh, played. Yep, yep, we have a new conservation agent <laughs> in Hutchinson who actually started on the very same day Jen started. Uh -huh. uh, Michelle Green was uh, did an awesome job, uh, but she was picked off by the private sector. Uh, so oh, yeah. Tech approached her, and yeah, she's now doing permitting for offshore wind and you know major oh, major environmental cool. stuff. So, uh, but one one thing I just will call attention to. Uh, leading up to tonight, we knew there would be some neighborhood interest. We had a number of walk-ins and. Uh, I, um, and Jen had gone ahead and put the application right on the ZBA website, which is just a great, it's it's a little thing, but it's a level of service that has never been there before. And you can expect that going forward. Uh, so now, you know, if someone gets a butter notice, they go to the ZBA site, they're going to see this link that says, uh, uh, you know, current zoning board applications. Right now, there's only one as she just started. But mm -hmm. but this is the kind of thing that I think is really, you know, as people get used to that, they're going to be really happy to, to you know, because now everyone goes online. And if they go and there's nothing there, you know, it, they uh, some people come in, but a lot of people, they just expect to get things sure. online. Sure. Yeah. Great. That's a great service. It's just like the planning board. Uh, the select board package, you know, so people can look at it. Yeah. Right. yeah. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Good. So if it's all right, I don't need to stay for your meeting minutes. Oh, come on. I was going to excuse uh, me. No. Please. Oh, yeah. Before you leave, we might have to uh, bow into you for a little legal. Yeah. Yeah. I, I sent a note, I think, to, to you three last week. I don't know if that got to the full board, but, but I, you know, town council, that's no problem with your yeah. questions for them. Very okay. Good. So, you just send them to me and I'll get them through that. Okay. They're very kindly turning things around. So. All right. Sounds good. All right. Great. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.
I can't put minutes up here. You see them. The, the, um, I sent them out um, a handful of days ago. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's I hate the owl. I get in trouble in meetings all the time. Mm -hmm. Oh, I do. So what's your then now? Oh, yes. I want to make sure I had the right one. Thank you. Because I yeah. there are a lot of podcasts yeah. up there. And I'm, I'm Who's the only one that showed up? Me and Rick? Yeah. Showed up. Let's get money. I, I, yeah, I, didn't, I haven't had cash. I said, I don't think Rick has spent my leave. You can't buy corn down the farm stand without cash. Yeah. Unless you want to Venmo three bucks. I Venmo probably less than that. Well, they, uh, that's a business. They get charged money. Oh, they do? Yeah. You should be able to write a line. Thank you. No, no. Okay. So which one are you? He recorded it. He was so on that. So Sean, I don't know. Do you have that on your phone? I can scan it. How do we get that off of there? I'll take care of it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So um, the only issue I had was this has to be updated. Couldn't find that, like the paging and all that, like for on the application. On um, yeah, okay. And I'll just for for me. The one on Main Street. Oh, do you? Oh, 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 you mean the wavy sign? We still talking about that? What's that? Yeah, this is the wavy sign. Writing up the minutes. Eighty minutes from the wavy sign. Going to read which was. Yeah, you pay. Pay. We'd have to this go. This is the wavy sign thing. If that's what you're looking for. Oh, that's for this. That I wasn't here for that meeting. Correct. Correct. You want this? I don't yeah. think it's in there. I don't think it's in there. Oh. But I would have uh, voted no. Yeah. Yeah, he got bullied. Well, well, I don't. I he tried yeah. to scam. Yeah. He tried to scam me. I don't yeah. like it. I brought my husband's truck in with there last year. I brought. I went there once. Never went back. And he said to me, "He's yeah." I brought it. I brought Chuck's truck in, and he was like, "I go to Romney at the corner." I oh, no, is a no, just an infection sticker. Oh yeah, because it was like I'd been away, and we were like over the date or whatever. And I said, I, "I'm like, I'll take it for you." He's yeah. like, "Oh, you need brakes and mm. tires <laughs> right now. I can do them right now." And I said, "Well, this isn't my car. It's my husband's." Mm. Tell, oh no no no! I do it for you right now. No, I went to Rami. Rami's like you don't need either. No, Rami's the most Rami, guy you ever meet. I I love him. <laughs> so you have to scan. He doesn't do inspections. No, okay. we, we gave him the bandwidth to, him, to extend the building, him, but he said the machine was so expensive. He said I'm just so busy with the repairs because I don't have time for it. Yeah. Well, they bumped out the I building. Right? Yeah, they did. Yeah. But okay, so we can look that up. So yeah. The two issues are I can look that up at the assessors and the yeah, wait, and yeah, look at that. And then we can yeah, yeah. we <laughs> Yeah, I don't know this is zero. Oh. Sam's letter oh, says three twenty seven <laughs> street. I'm sorry. The application says three thirty. And the patient says three thirty. Look, he got money. So it's oh, you can scan it so like I just did. Yeah. Hey, he doesn't even know where his address is, but can scan me, man. But later on, what's it say? Back in here. Oh boy. Scan. These people drive me nuts. Well, I'm not being recorded right now, right? No, now. we put on a mobile that says 3:30 Main Street on the stamp. You see a stamp? Like, you see a stamp? I don't want something. Don't 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 yes. I'm like, I mean, that. everyone has the economic. Yeah, so I think it's 3:30. Sam's letter says 326. And then we can look it up on the assessment. Yeah. That's why it's under the Coffin Street paper. All right. So, uh, Paul, what was it? 50, 40, 40, 400. Yeah. I think it'll be fifty by now. Yeah, you know, it will. Well, it's a late fee. Paul Kelly, he's got your nice face. And, and I want you guys all to know that because because of the gift and the beautiful card that he gave Joan, he got. Would you say I got the? How long have you been with her? Uh, oh, a hug. Like thirty. Yeah, you got a hug yeah, after like thirty <laughs> years of working. <laughs> Paul, it's asking me for your last four digits to make sure it's right. Uh, what? Phone. Four yeah. digits here. Last four digits of your phone number. Uh, Two nine one. Two, two no, three. Two, zero. Yeah. That was the hardest question you had. Number, Pat? We have Paul's number in your phone. Yes. Do you, know, you want to see what comes up? It says trouble maker. Okay. I thought it was PK trouble. I think it comes up PK trouble. Chairman for life? Yeah. 
I, I should put that in there, huh? Okay. So we're doing his we're last four digits. Yeah. Eight one eight zero. Eight one eight. You're not even close. Four six five eight one eight zero. That's not the right number. Try right again. Two zero so, nine. Hang on. Paul Kelly. Ooh. Nine, I got two numbers. Right. Nine seven eight two seven three two zero nine one. Two zero. Uh, that's not right. Two zero nine one. Confirm. I'm gonna call you right the now. Payment on its way. All right. Good. Okay, he so he can't listen. It's there. Okay, there we go. Hey, two hundred bucks. So that the other number's no good, Paul. You didn't give me the update. Jesus. No, I'm down. No, four one eight zero is a that's house. You call me on that number. I don't have. Does to. anyone actually have a house phone? Yes. Yeah. It hangs on the wall. You do? Yes. It hangs on the wall, but it doesn't work. So I, every time I'm mad at the kids, I pick up. <sighs> you know, and I, I, I like, like, man, can you believe the kids? And then the little one, which was little, she used to believe it. And then I was like, Dad, that doesn't work. When does Bella go back to school? I have one. Twenty six. Oh, Santa goes to this twenty four. What? Uh, Wait, what Sunday? She's ready to go. Uh, you know what? She's like a different kid. Yeah. The first year of college, like she, she actually came home and said to Chuck and I, she was like. Uh, she goes, I was kind of a jerk. Yeah, you were. <laughs> <laughs> she was actually always a nice kid, though. I mean, in, in, in the, I know it's different. Yeah, I know that. Really nice kid, though, really. Always. No, she's doing great. She's working a ton. Awesome. Um, she's got two jobs, so she's been working a ton. Ty's been working a lot this summer. He's working at the Black Cow. Awesome. So he's... Uh, can't believe you do this. He's, I got three twenty six all over here. He's so, so excited. Oh, any, you want to any comments or anything else, or accepted as accepted the corrections back right there? Spend money for the institute. Yeah, and we'll have it tomorrow. Did you read them? Did you just find them? Uh, yeah, see them yeah you should mind yeah. the next day. It's late. Yeah, it's after eight o'clock. You may not get it. Until uh, the day next yeah, Friday night. Oh, that's Friday. Oh, yeah. Who do you get? Um, who do you bank with? Back. Yeah, you should have it either tomorrow or Friday. Yeah, they're pretty good. Well, we are now we're meeting in three weeks. Oh yeah, well, hang on. Four weeks. Yeah, no, four weeks. Oh yeah, I didn't read it. Sorry, it's okay. Um, <clears throat> I I was so focused on the other homework assignment that I forgot to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do have to say, Lisa Mead is one of the best attorneys I've seen in a long time. Okay. She's good. I used to call him. I said, "Hey, man, how you doing?" Used to be the man who reports. Years ago. I mean, she's a she put me off a little bit. The lawyer who was not good. She she backed on. Yeah, and she. Uh, 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 and that woman, why didn't I get a thing? It's not three hundred feet. It's three hundred feet. That's oh. everyone in town then. Yeah. What's and she name? said about well, you build a house, you get a room, the uh, environment up there. Like, why did you build your house? You yeah, exactly. Well, that's well, kind we'll of see. my point. You don't get like you just buy them if you don't want anyone to build it, buy the lot and yeah. just and and the other thing, the one that's talking about her front yard that she's improved. Yeah. If she's been hey, improving wait. in the town hey, drive hey, of hey, life. Hey, hey, wait, wait. We, we we can't talk exactly. anymore about it. We can't talk anymore until we come back oh, to the other hand. All right. This is a yeah. public meeting violation yeah. stuff. We can talk about ourselves. We can talk about the previous yeah. minutes. Can I yeah. anything talk? here? Yeah. I'm looking. Nothing red flag. So anything else? Or just there's an address correct uh, check. We're gonna edit address, deed reference, zoning, right? And everything that's highlighted and 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 anywhere else in the text. Where it might need to be changed, like the title or something. He and his family own forty small service stations. Oh, Rami. Yeah. Yeah. So I met Rami's brother. I think in Georgetown. So I met his brother. I'm trying to get out of here. Yeah. No. I. Just stay focused. Sorry. Make a motion to accept. I wasn't here for that meeting, so I can't. With with that. As with that is as edited by Captain Decker. Second. Second. Aye. Aye. All in favor? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. What time was that? That's an eight. It only took another 20 minutes yeah, then. I'm so sorry. He owns, right. yeah, he owns one in Georgetown. Against Volvo House. I moved to the meeting. Are you kidding? That's good to know. Well, I mean, I want my current calendar. Right.